a conditional sum function, whether a sum if or a sum ifs, requires, among other arguments, a criteria range. Changing the selected criteria updates the result of the conditional sum function. However, if you select a condition from different criteria ranges, then you will need to recreate your function every time. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to create a dynamic sum if function where the criteria range is floating between different columns of the source data. Let's explore the finished project. In this project, my source data shows transactional trackers where I have a date column, a region, a manager, a customer, payment, cost of goods sold, and sales. I created an amazing drop list in cell L2 in which I combined five different drop lists in one single cell. So if I click on the down arrow, I can select any one of the fields. If I select region, the contents of the drop list change and I see the different regions. I can go back to the distribution hub, home, select a different direction, let's say I select payment, and the contents of the drop list change and I can select a different payment method, let it be Visa. If you want to learn how I created this beautiful, five drop lists combined in one single cell, then you can watch my tutorial, Unbelievable, five different drop lists in one single cell. Link is in the description below this video. When I selected Visa, in cell M2, I get the total sales for Visa, and I use the sum if function that looks at the criteria range for the different payment methods. However, if I select a customer, let's say I select the drop list for customers and I select Costco, my sum if function updates and note that in this case, it's picking up a different criteria range from column D, the customer. How in the world can I create a sum if function with a floating criteria range? I also have a dynamic label in cell M1 that returns total for Costco. If I change my condition and I select a different field, let's say manager, then I get the total sales for all the managers and the label changes to total sales. Now let's build our project from ground up in Excel. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. After creating my dynamic five drop list in cell L2, from which I can select any region, any manager, any customer, or any payment method, now I would like to add up the sales based upon whatever condition I select in cell L2. However, if I select any field like region, manager, customer, payment, I get the total sales. I start my project by selecting any single item. So if I click on the down arrow and let's say I select the payment and from payment I'll be selecting let's say PayPal. Now I would like to create a function that adds up all the sales for PayPal. This is a simple sum if function. Then I type equal sum if and then I hit tab. The first argument is the criteria range and because PayPal is a payment method, then I hover over payment and I select the entire column. And then I type a comma, it asks me about the criteria, I select PayPal. And then I type a comma, what would you like to sum? The last argument of the sum if function is the sum range. I want to sum the sale, then I select the sales. If I close the bracket and then hit enter, I get the total sales paid by PayPal. But what if I change my condition? and I select a manager, then the criteria range should change. So if I select manager, that doesn't work. And if I select George, then I get a zero because the criteria range should change and pick up a value from column C, the manager. 
And to do that, I need to have a floating criteria range. So I'll be deleting this function in M2. And I start by sending my table to Power Query. I select any single cell. And then I click on the data tab of the ribbon. And to the left side of the data tab, I click on From Sheet. That will fire up my query editor. The query editor opens on top of Excel. To the right side, I want to change the query name. This will be my preparation, so I'll call it prep. And then I start by deleting some columns. The date column is selected. I press Control, select the cost of goods sold, press Control, and select sales. I want to delete all these columns. Then I right click and select remove columns. The next step is to select all the columns. I click on region, press shift, and click on payment. And I want to unpivot these columns, so I right click, and from the right click menu, I select unpivot columns. With the unpivoted columns, I want to change the name of the first one, and I'll make it field, and I'll keep the name of the second column value. I select the value column. And I want to remove any duplicates. So on the Home tab, I click on the down arrow for Remove Rows. And I select Remove Duplicates. That's fine. Now I want to sort the field column. I select Field and I sort it ascending. And now I'm ready to send my query back into Excel. I'll do that by clicking on the down arrow for Close and Load. Select Close and Load 2. And I want to send it as a table in the existing worksheet. So I select existing worksheet. I want to dump it in cell V1. I hit OK. I close the queries and connections. And now this is my preparation table that I need for extracting the field name. Whenever I select an item in cell L2, then I have to look at this item in the value column and return the field name. So right now, I have the name of one of the managers. Then I start by creating an XLOOKUP function, equal XLOOKUP. And the XLOOKUP function will look at whatever I have in the drop list in cell L2, and it will look at it in the value column in the preparation table. Then I select the value column, I type a comma, and it will return a value from the field column. Then I select the field column. When I close the bracket and then hit enter, then whenever I select an item in L2, it will return the field name corresponding to that item. Let's test with a different option. Now to go to a different direction, I have to go to the distribution hub. So if I select, let's say, payment, then I get a not available error. We'll deal with that later. I click on the down arrow, and now if I select Visa, everything is working fine, and it's returning the field name, which is payment. I want to expand column T and U as I'll be creating a much longer function, and I'm going to drag them to the right. And in preparation for extracting a floating criteria range for my sum if function, I don't need just the field name which is payment, I need to return the position of this field. Then I'm going to wrap my XLOOKUP function in a MATCH function. I hit F2, and then before the XLOOKUP function, I type MATCH, and then I hit TAB. What's your lookup value? All this XLOOKUP function. I click at the end, I type a comma. Where do you look for it? I look for it in the top row of my source table from the region to payment. I select these four cells, and then I type comma zero for an exact match. And when I close the bracket and then hit enter, it's returning position number four. And I have currency formatting. Let's remove it, control shift tilde. And when I use a general formatting, then it's returning the position of the column that should be used as a criteria range in my sum if function. Let's test what if I go in a different direction, and let's say I select a region. Of course, I get a not available error. I'll be dealing with that. But if I select any region like North, it says that will be column number one. Now we need to extract the entire column 
of whatever item I select in cell L2. And to do that, I'll be wrapping all these function inside an index function. Let's hit F2 and put the function in the edit mode. I'll be cutting all this function control X and I start creating my index function. So I type index and then I hit tab. What's the array from which you want to extract an entire column? I'll be selecting the four columns from region to payment. That's the first argument of the index function. I type a comma and the second argument, what's the row number? I want all the rows. Then I'm not providing a row number. I type another comma. And what about the column number? The column number will be the entire match and XLOOKUP function. Then I paste it at this position. And I close the bracket for the index function. When I hit enter, I was able to extract the entire column. This is the floating criteria range. This is what the SUMIF function needs to calculate properly whatever the item we select. Now I'm going to put my index function in a SUMIF function. Then I'll cut it, keep it in the office clipboard. I hit F2 and cut my entire index function to make it easy to understand for you, I hit escape and delete, and now I start creating my sum if function, equal sum if, and when I hit tab, it asks me, what's your criteria range? I need a floating criteria range. Then I paste the entire function that I created with the index, the match, and the XLOOKUP function. Control V to paste. I click at the end and I type a comma. The second argument of the SUMIF function, what's your condition? Whatever comes from the magical drop list in cell L2, I type a comma. And the last argument, what's your sum range? What would you like to sum? I need to add up the sale. Then I select the sales column. I close the bracket. And when I hit enter, I get the sum of sales for the North region. We need to bring back the currency formatting. I use the shortcut control shift four to do that. And now if I change my condition and instead of North, I select, let's say, a customer. I get a not available error. We have to deal with that. And then I click on the down arrow. And if I select staples, I get the total sales for staples. Then my SUMIF function is working fine. Whatever the item I select, the SUMIF function is returning the correct result. However, if I select a field name, region, manager, customer, and payment, it returns a not available error. Then I'm going to wrap my entire SUMIF function inside an if error function. If I get an error, then return the total sales. I select my function in M2. I put it in the edit mode F2. And I want to wrap my SUMIF function in an if error function. Then before the SUMIF, I type if error and then I hit tab. I click at the end. If this entire SUMIF function is returning an error, then go ahead and return the total sales. Then I type sum, I hit tab, and I select the sales column, and I close the bracket for the sum function, and I close the bracket for the if error. When I hit enter, I get the total sales for whatever item I'm selecting. If I change and select a field instead of an item, because this is my distribution hub for the drop list, now if I select manager, I get the total sales for all the managers. If I click on the down arrow and from here I select, let's say, Nabil, then I get the total sales for Nabil. If I click on the down arrow and let's go to a customer, then I get the total sales for customers. And my SUMIF function is working fine with a floating criteria range. To finalize this project, I want to create a dynamic label in cell M1 that says, this is the sum for whatever item I select in L2. However, if I select an entire field, it returns the tax total sales. I will be creating an if function. So I select cell M1 and I type equal if and then I hit tab. 
I can move this screen tip by hovering over it and when I see the mouse pointer changing to a four-headed arrow, I can move it there. I want to select M2 and I say if it's equal to the sum of sales, then I type sum, I hit tab, I select the sales column and then I close the bracket for the sum function. If M2 equals the sum of sales, that means you are selecting an entire field Then I need the text total sales. I type a comma and then in double quotation I type total sales and then I type a comma. What if the logical test returns false? What if it's not equal to the sum of sales? In double quotation I type total four and this space and I close the double quotation. I want to join it to whatever comes from L2. Then I type Shift 7, the joining operator of Excel, and I click on cell L2. I close the bracket for my IF function, and then I hit Enter. And because I'm selecting an entire field, Customer, then the label reads Total Sales. If I click on the down arrow and I select any customer, let's say Walmart, then I get the total for Walmart. If I move to a different direction and I select, let's say, a region, then I get the total sales for all the regions. But if I select a specific region like East, I get the total sales for the East region. And we finished creating our project. If you enjoyed this training video, Give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.